Well, I want to welcome everybody to today's Entrepreneur Show. And I am so delighted to introduce to you our next guest. But before I do, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Heidi Richards Mooney. I am the founder of Women in E-Commerce and the host of this show. And you can learn all about it and all of our guests on entrepreneurs.com. And I'll put that over in the message section so you can actually click on it. And today I have the pleasure of introducing to you a woman that I met last March in uh, Cascais, Portugal, an amazing woman, uh, just brilliant speaker. And I'm so delighted that she gave us this opportunity to, uh, sh to share her wisdom with you. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Esther Lishka. She's president of Glow Branding You. So with a degree in international relations, Esther has developed her career between South America, the United Kingdom, and Portugal in a social, diplomat, diplomatic, and corporate environment. She has international training in the areas of personal branding, coaching, neuro-linguistic programming, and conditionative hypnosis, consultant and training in the area of personal branding. Say that fast five times. <laughs> Using several modalities to help clients achieve their distinct personal brand, including her expertise as an image consultant, Esther applies methods of color identification and styles which best fit your face and personality. And she's going to tell us a lot more. So please help me welcome Esther. Thank you, Thank you very much for a lovely introduction. Heidi, oh. I'm so excited to be here. Well, thank you. And I'm excited because, you know, with technology, it's just amazing. You can meet someone uh, clear across the world and then you get to connect this way. It's almost like we're in the same room. Uh, and I, I just think that this is such a marvelous medium for not only people reconnecting, but also to learn from from different uh, diverse cultures um, and how they do things. And the fact is that we, what we find, I found in, in interviewing women around the world is that we're a lot more similar than we are different. And, and the way we approach business is very similar, especially when it comes to women. So tell us about how you first became interested in personal branding as a career. And then what is the impact it has had on you personally and professionally? <laughs> Well, um, I have to say it started uh, early when I started to work. Um, I started my first uh, job in, in England, in London, and I was doing something uh, totally opposite of what I, I'm doing today. But that was a good experience because I could test what is not uh, what I wanted. And um, it was um, um, a job in which I wasn't using my own talents and myself. Um, I wasn't being myself, and uh, but because of that experience, I started to be curious about what is it that I love to do, and then was my starting point. I started to do courses and trainings on coaching and um, personality profiles to know about more about myself. And then it was uh, the click, um, especially because I come from South America. I uh, was born in Venezuela. Um, we give a lot of uh, importance uh, to our image. Uh, and I knew, uh, because of my uh, experience in Venezuela, that the way we look, it creates an effect in the way we look with our inner eyes. So um, when I started to do all these trainings, I discovered all these, um, like to the things that I liked to do, like to work with people and to help them feel more confident. And um, I wanted to create a model where in which I could work the way we see ourselves with our inner eyes, but also the impact that we have when we see our image in, our, in the mirror and we see what we see. So um, that's when I created Glow Branding New, because I wanted to create a method that we can work both ways. So if I work with um, these techniques about uh, that I created, mixing all these um, um, training in coaching and um, in PNL, and also to work with the um, Color Me Beautiful, which is the brand that I represent here in Portugal. Um, which is uh, how to make the most of our body and our physical characteristics, we can create um, the external part of our body, 
gives a message to our inner eyes. And then if we work our mind with all these trainings, then we work as well in both sides. So the effect that you have, the result is more effective. So it sounds to me, and you did everything right. And a lot of people wonder when they start business, they keep working in these careers or these companies that don't really serve them well. They don't serve their personality. They don't serve their, they don't feel that feel, fill them up and feed their passion. I think it's just remarkable that you found that out so early in your career so that you were able to actually take what you learned, uh, which is very wise you know obviously you're 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 um, an old soul because you were able to take what you learn and apply it to a, a business that would help a lot of people so um but but making that shift from working for a company to working for yourself that had to be a big challenge for you i mean um how did you start doing that i mean what was what were some of the steps you took to to not only obviously you broke away from the company but you know, to know, not knowing anything about being in business for yourself, were there things that you had to do in order to make that happen, especially, uh, and I don't know if it's the same um, where you are, as opposed to here, as far as, you know, all the different things we have to go through to start our own companies. <laughs> uh, that's so an I interesting question, because I not only have to do that shift, but also have to do it in a different country. Because when I realized that, <laughs> I was in England, and then I have I decided to move to Portugal, so it was a start all over again uh, from zero. Uh, so it was a difficult time in 2004, uh, especially here in Portugal. Uh, they weren't used to hear about personal branding. What is that? Uh, what we do with that? What do I gain with that? So at the beginning, it was um, very difficult to try to convey the concept, the, the meaning of uh, what it is. Um, but little by little, I was doing a lot of trainings and um, um, it was a difficult time. I have, a, if you ask me what, how I did this, this transition, I have a part-time job and then I started to do this uh, other activity. Until now, the, the, I completely work on, on the trainings and also I founded uh, the Globe Women Club because uh, during all these years, I realized that women... Uh, were more likely to give more time and investment in, in herself to learn how to make the most of the brand um, in the sense as well that um, mo more women were looking for to, to create their own uh, enterprises, to do their own uh, business. Um, and we have to... Um, we have to know how to sell ourselves um, in the good sense, because in especially there is um, a cultural thing as well in, in Portugal. Uh, we we need to convey what we are, but with uh, being humble, and um, we need to be visible, which is I think is one of our um, the formula for success. We need to I think there is two things that we need to take into account: the value of ourselves. What is the positioning of our brand? Uh, and also to be visible, but to be visible to our uh, audience. So, and most people, most women, uh, what I see is that they don't even identify exactly what, uh, who is uh, her audience. And if we start only with the basic things, um, people uh, realize um, how easy it is to build their brand. So tell us, define for our audience personal brand, what it actually means and what it means to you. It's, for me, is um, is a process. So mm -hmm. but just being a process, it means that it's something in continuing. It's uh, on the go. Uh, it's continuing. Um, and also what we see of, of um, uh, the way I see personal branding is to see ourselves um, like a product, literally. But um, all, we are a, a, a human being. So how do you transform that? If you're a product, you have to know very well who you are. And all that experience that I mentioned before about uh, being the wrong job and doing the wrong things, it was a good experience because it taught me um, where, where to have to focus my energy. And most of the people that um, 
feel that they don't have energy at work, they don't feel motivated, is because they are not putting their talents and their own um, um, yeah, talents um, and values uh, to work. Uh, and also yeah. to find out what is my purpose, my mission, what am I doing here? So what, what it is that I want to achieve? And if you see yourself as the product that you have your talents, you have your characteristics, and you want to put it in the, in, for the market, for your market, you need to know how to position. You need to know um, um, what the things, what are the, the, the skills that you need to develop. You need to know the way you have to, to dress or to accessorize because you are the product. But that doesn't sell. What sells is also that you are visible, that you're visible to the people that you need to be visible. And um, it, it all needs to have your own strategy and to think of, uh, of yourself with strategy in mind. A lot of uh, women as well that, um, that I could uh, see another, let's say, symptom of they're not working their personal brand is that they don't um, evaluate um, what is the impact of all the actions that they are doing and then they feel drained, they feel tired because they're doing a lot of things but not getting enough results. And if you're not getting enough results, that's a sign that you need to be aware to check up. What is it that I'm doing? Um, or not doing, not wrong, but maybe it's not in the best way that I'm doing it. So what is your value proposition? What is it that you have special, that you have uh, in, that differentiate you? Uh, and, what, and how are you putting it outside? Um, I used to say um, that a lot of uh, women especially are sitting on a gold mine, but they don't, they, don't, they don't even know that they are sitting in a gold mine because they don't share uh, all the glow. And that's why my company is called Glow Branding You. Uh, and, I, and I also realized that women in particular um, I don't know how, how to express it. It's like when sometimes we have fear of exposure, uh, when we don't want to talk in public, uh, and I see a lot of that in, in my business. They, they have sometimes opportunities to go to television and talk or go to an interview in the radio. Um, I didn't feel uh, comfortable, maybe is because they are not comfortable with themselves and to share. When I said that we are, we are afraid of exposure, is because we are afraid of sharing a little bit of ourselves to others. And when we share just a little bit once, we realize that at the end of the day, it's nothing like a terrible experience as they usually imagine that it is. So why do you think that women in particular have trouble sharing? Is it because is it you think it's a confidence issue or or um or maybe they're not sure what to share what what do you think it has to do uh, to do a lot of with confidence and actually that's yeah. the main skill if you can call it skill um characteristic that uh, that I work um it's confidence it's all about confidence so you help women build their confidence in order to get to that level. So tell, let's talk a little bit. Of, you mentioned visibility. So what is some of the ways that you coach your clients to become more visible in their in their in their marketplace? The first question that the client needs to ask uh, is, who is my audience? Yes. Because uh, normally they they say, okay, imagine that my business is women. Okay, but what kind of women? Um, are there professional women? Are there entrepreneurs? There, are there CEOs? Um, um, are there independent workers? What's their age? What's their income? Um, how do they feel about um, the strong issues? Like what do they care about? So when we start to think about the, all these questions, we, we go, we have a better perspective of where I need to be present to be visible for this kind of audience. And it's all about who is the people that you need to be visible to. And once you um, discover or define um, who is your audience, then you start to build up to think, okay, 
where are these women in this case or this um, um, characteristic of these people are and then to see be, uh, make up a bridge let's say between what is it in your own rec resources that you can do to be visible to them it could write it could be have a blog if you're good at writing um, it could be giving uh, small talks if you go to different places and you feel comfortable uh, giving talks. It could be your social media, it could be hiring you, <laughs> Heidi. Um, so it could be um, different things, but until you don't define exactly who is your target audience, you cannot um, know exactly how to be visible. And the other thing is, I, I used to say to my, when I, I teach uh, in, in big groups, I, ask to, I, us, I usually ask them, uh, raise their hands, who sells? Um, normally say, well, I don't sell because I have my job and I do and I have a salary at the end of the day. But I say, everybody is selling 24 hours a day because everything that you do, the way you talk with people, all your attitudes, the way you dress, the way you wear makeup even, um, it's all about talking about you. And it's all about the perceptions people have about you. So even if you think that you are not selling, you are selling because it's all about the relationship that you create with people around you. And selling is not only the exchange of money uh, in, in exchange of a, a service or a product, because when you're in a meeting and you want to convey your idea uh, to a group, you are selling your idea or when you um, even when you are in a group of uh, friends and you are going to decide to which restaurant are you going to dinner, uh, whoever uh, wins, let's say, the, the best suggestions is the, the one who could sell um, the, the place that where she was suggesting. So it's, um, it's all about the perception and the way you see yourself. So you're absolutely right. Uh I think that uh, word of mouth is one of the best ways to sell anything. So if you can if you can help people develop that, you're good at what you do. Um, obviously, that that part of it goes up. Let's talk a little bit about how you help people develop their personal brand. What are some of the things that you do when you're working with your clients? Uh, when I work uh, one to one, which is um, I have a, a special program, uh, especially for women uh, entrepreneur and. Uh, uh -huh. um, the way we, we do is during three months, we, um, we establish this plan, this strategy. When we do the first part, the, the positioning, we work on the values of the person because the values, the values that we have are, let's say, uh, what guide us to do what we do every day. Uh, then, you, then I work on the, the talents so with a lot of exercise we discover because when when you see if you ask someone to talk about yourself it would be very different very difficult uh, to talk about yourself but there is a little exercise i don't know if i can do it right now with with you and with all the people here can i do it sure you can do whatever you want it's your show today <laughs> so think of yourself if you were a brand which brand would you be and give me three reasons why you were that brand if you were a brand when you say a brand if it were a brand a well-known brand or my own brand any other brand okay so some other brand not the brand that i currently am okay gee that's a great question oh uh, people can do it in the chat if they think i would I, yeah, if you anybody else wants to play along, go ahead. I think Twitter would be my brand <laughs> because I love to write. I love to write in sound bites. I love to be get right to the point. That happens to be more my personality, you know. Uh, yeah, I tend to talk a lot, but but I like to talk in sound bites. I think Twitter has helped me become a really good um, writer, and I love to write. So um, I mean, I don't know if Twitter is the exact. Uh, it, it, it is a brand. I mean, obviously, any of the social media networks are a brand. Three reasons: because uh, because it help, because I'm a good writer. I love to write. Uh, I'm very direct and to the point. Uh, that, that's you're asking me for three qualities, and because you, it's quick. 
it's like you you can come and go as you please. And I happen to be that kind of person where I don't, I, even though I'm sitting in front of a computer a lot, uh, I like to be able to work on multiple things. And with Twitter, you can do that. And, you know, with an, I guess with my brand, I can. When I take on clients, I'll, I'll do uh, one project, then I'll work on another client's project. I'll go back to this client and do a different part of her project. I'm, it's always different. And that's what I love. Like Twitter to me is something where it's, there's, it's never the same. Every day you go there, there's new trending topics. There's new people, um, you know, new interactions, new news. I mean, it's just amazing. So I guess Twitter is the first thing that came to my mind. I'm sure that I'll have a better answer later. Well, the thing is, Heidi, that whichever brand you choose is the less relevant thing is the reasons that you chose to see that because everything that you see in the brand is what you are really. And you can do that okay. if you choose a country, if you choose your favorite uh, or a dish or something, a meal that you want or you prefer, it works with everything, with anything. You can choose a book, uh, you can choose a film, whatever it is. Wow that you see, the three reasons that you see in whatever you choose are talking about you and are talking about the deepest thing because we cannot see in other things whatever is not inside us. So if for the our um, audience that is here today, if they want to do an exercise to, to see more about uh, themselves, they can do this, this exercise and choose nine or ten things that they will choose and three reasons for each of them and with all the results that they're gonna going to have they would they are going to see everything exactly their profile because everything that they see in other things are inside them wow, see in that's others, cool. uh, something that is not inside us and some people when i work um, sometimes when people that are uh, shy to talk in public for instance and they see all these things they realize that they have much more potential than what they really are seeing in themselves. And all the work that I do with my clients, it's about that. I do a lot of exercise in which they put in, in a way there are games and, and play, play, we're playing uh, roles as well, um, in which they see that in fact, what they are seeing is uh, less potential than when they with what they really have. So it's all about that. And little by little, you're uh, building their confidence, doing all these um, little exercises. So tell us who is your ideal client? Well, I, <laughs> I think with the exercise, I just did it because our women, <laughs> special yeah. entrepreneurs um, and also CEOs or, for instance, um, I work a lot with people in, in in high positions, they're, they are very good in, in what they do uh, in their job, but then the, because of their rising, rising in their careers, and they sometimes need to be a little bit more exposed and give talks or, or to be present in, in conference or things like that, they need to build a little bit more confidence um, on these uh, scen new scenarios. So that's a another area that I work with. So it could be someone there, um, that is, has more exposure and need to be dealing with that in a better way. So if you're working with a client, for instance, and you're starting from scratch, they don't know who they are, what their personal brand is, what is the process? I, not what is, because that could take all day, but how long does that process typically take to say, uh, develop or discover their personal mm -hmm. brand? Like, what? As I said before, it's three months. I usually have a session per week, one hour and a half, a 90 minute session. And in each session, we work uh, specific skills. And in from one session, session to the next one, there is something, uh, a task to do during their day to day life. Because that's why you start building this confidence and realizing how they are communicating because communication is also um, a skill that we need to, to work. Um, and we work on, uh, um, on this basis. So normally it's three months. So you work with, the, with them on a lot of different skill levels. They don't, it's not just about the, it, you're helping them with their communication, you're helping them there with their image and everything, yes. 
right? We do the test colors, for like instance, that. if we realize that the client wants to know more about um, the image consulting side of the program, then we do we give more attention to that part. So each client is okay, different, so uh, but roughly is three months. Okay, and then um, uh, tell us a little bit about Glow Brand, Glow uh, Women. Yeah, Club. that started uh, two years ago, three years, I guess. Um, and it started because um, uh, in 2010, uh, I I got pregnant, and and then six months later, when my son was six months, I got pregnant from a second baby. <laughs> Oh, wow. At the time, I used to do, <laughs> organize the networking events at the British Chamber of Commerce here in Portugal. And unfortunately, I had to quit that job. That was my part-time job because uh, I wanted at the end of the day, I wanted to be with my babies. And all the networking events were at the end of the day. And then in 2012, um, I realized that maybe we... Um, Maybe we could, uh, I could organize something in which we could do networking, but not at the end of the day. Maybe we could do it at lunch, and maybe we can do it something more glamorous or more um, attractive to women. Uh, because what I, what I used to, to see in the business rings they were too formal, too gray, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to do something more attractive to, to women. And because women was um, the public that I, the, the, the audience that I was working with, I decided to start uh, the Glow Lunches. So that started in 2012. Uh, and then it, uh, it, it became very um, successful in a way that people wanted to be more, uh, I wanted to do it in other cities and we started to grow. And then I have my brand, the Glow Branding New, then I have Glow Lunch. And then we started the Glow Academy for the specific trainings for these kind of um, ladies. And then um, one day I was talking with my colleagues and uh, they said, well, we have all these brands all separated and maybe we, we, we could uh, put it all together under one umbrella. And then was when we started Glow Woman Club because it's a specific... Um, kind of women, we are all entrepreneurs, we all want to, to share, to grow together, and not only in business, but also at the personal level. So it's important to, to build this bridge between our personal life and our professional life. Um, and it, it just uh, started uh, in that way. So it, it became logical to start it, to create a community. So so how do you spread the word about your organi your organization, your club? How do people find out about it? Uh, we have Mainly. our website. It's glowwomenclub.com. At the moment, we are only in Portugal <laughs> because uh, it's only physical, uh, like presence, presential. But we are um, thinking of doing something more that, in a way that we can reach more women in other parts uh, of, like, of the world um have a network um so but that's uh that's in the future not uh, now for the moment so we have only in portugal so but that is one of your future goals yeah. one of the one of the big actually the fifth your... brand is glow network <laughs> which is going to be online <laughs> fabulous fabulous and you know you can do a lot of this online i've been doing women in e-commerce online for for 14 years so it can be done. And I want to just give a shout out to, to Linda Pereira, who is, is on our International Board of Advisors for Women in E-Commerce, because that's how you and I met at, uh, the, uh, at the Women of Wisdom Conference in, in Kashkais. And I understand that, that the Glow Woman Club and you are co-hosting the next conference in uh, Porto, correct? Okay. You're one of our, our co-hosts. So, yeah, so that is just wonderful. Esther, if we have time at the end, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about that. Let's talk a little bit about um, um, how you promote yourself online and how you promote your, your, your group online. Because this primarily this show is about, you know, how we, how we do business on the web. But I like to get the backstory because I think people need to understand what it is we do in order to understand how we can, how it's possible to get to spread the word far and wide. And I, you've done such an amazing job, really. 
So well, yes, <laughs> thank you. We're in the in the phase of doing that, Heidi. At the moment, the um, the main channel that we use um, is uh, Facebook in, so in in terms of social media. Uh, in second place is LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter here in Portugal is not that um, used. Uh, we don't use it that much. Uh, so that's why we don't use it that much. So we give preference to Facebook and LinkedIn. And also we have our channel in YouTube, but as everything is in Portuguese <laughs> so far. <laughs> that's all right. Now you could do an interpreter and have it done in both both languages or many languages, really, the way the world is. That's just wonderful. Um, so, um, what is she, so obviously you use Facebook and LinkedIn. Do you have a favorite social media channel, and if so, why? The, um, here in Portugal, uh, it's Facebook. Um, okay. I don't know if it's a cultural thing. Is what works best? Uh, people um, interact a lot with us through Facebook. Um, and I don't know, it's something that naturally has uh, came up. Is Facebook uh, our favorite channel? Uh, especially, I, I also so think it's because we use a lot of, in our events, we take a lot of pictures and everything comments on the pictures and share them. And it's the most popular uh, social media. I agree. I think when you talk about events, Facebook is one of the best because people want to feel like they were there and also it makes people feel like they missed something and then they can't miss another one. So Facebook has a, it's a kind of a double edged sword in that it's good for the people who've been there and they're like, it makes them feel good when they see those pictures of themselves. And I mean, after all, it's a, to me, Facebook is a very nepotistic um, website or, or social media channel. because we always want to go and see who's got pictures of us with them up. It's just the funniest thing, you know? Um, so that's great. I'm glad that you're using that. And, and it just shows that for those of you who are listening, no matter where you are in the world, there are a lot of things that we do uh, globally similar. Um, like you said, with Facebook, uh, I use Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is my favorite, even though I talked a lot about Twitter. I love LinkedIn for, for, for clients, for finding clients. It seems to be the best. Um, and I, what I mean by clients is I mean the high-end clients that can afford what I do. Um, because Facebook tends to be a lot of tire kickers in terms of buying the buying public. They're great for uh they're great cheerleaders. They're great. And there's a lot of the same people on there, but I think Facebook's just used um, differently than LinkedIn and LinkedIn is primarily professional. So I'm glad that you're using both. I think you're going to, uh, you've probably found that a lot of really amazing women have shown up from LinkedIn and now they're transferred over to Facebook in terms of the social aspect. Correct. Yeah. And I saw now that you mentioned it? LinkedIn and it depends. Um, and that's um, something that it's very useful to, to mention. Um, it depends on your positioning because when, if you talk about the glow woman club, it works Facebook. But when I talk about Glow Branding You, which is my other brand, which is my professional and the training company, then it's LinkedIn, definitely. So it, it depends on, on which brand yeah. uh, and which company you, you're working. And people need to understand the, the use for each one. One of uh, Evan Taxi said he uses Facebook just for ads and nothing else. Great, because I think, he, I think that's a great use of Facebook. Um, I do, I am on Facebook primarily to see what my children are doing. <laughs> but I also watch all my friends too. So I can keep up with friends who I know her, you know, I had a friend whose mother is very ill and I found out about it on Facebook and then I gave her a call. You know, she probably didn't have time to call everybody, but it's just, you know, that's what I think is the beauty of these different channels is you can use them for different things. So um, where do you get your creative ideas? Esther? Wow. Um, I have to say I inspire people I am inspired by the other inspiring people. So when I hear um, a talk or a conference uh, from an inspiring person, um, I get uh, creative. I hear, I see things from a different perspective. And I, I, I don't know if I mentioned to you before, but I, I'm, I'm a fan of the TED Talks. Uh, oh, me too. And it's amazing because it, hear sometimes about other um, subjects that are, that maybe are not has nothing to do with us make me I don't know if it forces your brain to think in a different way uh, but um, 
it's a habit that I have. Um, and it, it makes me think about things in a different way, from a different view. And other thing that I that is uh, uh, definitely a source for me of um, everything about uh, from create things from creation, creativity to inspiration. It's uh, the peer groups. At the Globe Women Club, we have peer groups, and it work it works um, fantastic. Even today, this morning, we have our session of this month, and it's amazing because you put an idea. Uh, a challenge that you have or something that is worrying you and to hear the view of other people in from a different perspective it's so inspiring and you have ideas and you get to think if, uh, on things in a different way so i think um, to be surrounded about with other women that are in the same or share the same values in and the same objectives in terms of professional speaking. Uh, I think it's a, a very good way to get creative ideas for your business as well. So peer groups would be my... Oh yeah, two heads are definitely better than... Yeah. Two heads are definitely... I'm in a lot of mastermind groups. I actually have a group called the Virtual Business Mastery Mastermind Group with another woman, uh, Christina Rowe. Her and I collaborate on a lot of things and uh, we are the facilitators of the group, but I always tell Christina, I get as much out of it as a facilitator, as if I were a participant, because when you hear the challenges people have, sometimes you have those, but they're not in the forefront of your mind. And then you can say, oh, now I have a solution because you weren't thinking okay. about that. You were thinking about something else. So I think that that's what's the beauty of one of those, a peer group, you call it, we here we call it a mastermind. Right. Um, you know, yeah, a group of people that they get together and then they, they, work on challenges together. See, you, cause we all have different perspectives. We all have different life experiences and um, we should probably start a, um, a virtual mastermind internationally with a different woman from wow. every country. Would that, that would be, be very rich <laughs> with <the> nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be bad. That's why I love to travel. You, you mentioned Ted talks. Well, I love Ted talks as well, but I find that traveling, it opens up your mind so much to different viewpoints and it makes you realize that there are more than one way to do things. And, and, but there are also a lot of similarities, as I mentioned at the beginning, we all have a lot of the same issues. It doesn't matter where you're from. A, women have certain issues and it's universal. A lot of women I know and I work with, it, it's a confidence issue until they build up their confidence. Uh, men have different issues. I don't work with men, so I don't want to bash them or tell you what their issues are. Um, but it's just, it's so interesting. So you're, so when you talk about TED Talks, I think that everybody should at least watch a few and ones that you wouldn't necessarily agree with because getting those different perspectives just makes your life so much richer. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And it helps in business too. So I have another question. I haven't. I understand that you have a tip or a resource of the week. Would you like to share that with our audience? Well, it has to be related with branding. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> well, maybe you know it because it's really connected to LinkedIn. It's branded me. I don't know if you know it. Uh, branded dot me. Branded.me. Oh, it, wow. Uh, allows so I you to build uh, like a mini website uh, from the information that you have in your, in your LinkedIn profile. But after it has uploaded all your information, you can arrange it, you can add things, you can put uh, pictures or videos or testimonials. So it's important if you work in inter internet to have social proof. So you can invite um, your clients or uh, the, mess, the more important uh, testimonials that you have and build your own mini website and you put that in your signature in your email so people when you uh, you send your email uh, in your signature you have that linked um, directly to your mini website so it's all about seeing yourself as a brand so that's what is called branded me so branded me is different than obviously LinkedIn in in a lot of ways because it's just about you, right? It, I mean, what makes it different in in I mean, why would someone? Uh, I mean, because I'm not on branded.me, so I don't know the answer. 
why would somebody want to participate in say branded.me or start a branded.me account if they've already got LinkedIn, for instance? You can uh, uh, see at the first view, it's the visual effect. You can see the information okay. very quickly. You, it's more um, attractive in the sense that you can put images um, and pictures. So you can um, navigate in a very easy way. Um, so I think it's more um, attractive. Um, I think it, it could, you can build more your resume, if you could say, oh. in, a, in a better, it's more, um, it's like if you improve the, um, the way you present your product. LinkedIn okay. is all uniform. Uh, here you have personalized it a little bit. So I think you can show more about your personality through the website. Fantastic. So, I, and and Eve, Evan Taxi said it was a good site. So, we'll definitely check it out. I'll, I'll definitely find you. Can you connect with other people on branded.me? I'm starting because there's a recent resource that I find out. That I found out. So, I'm, I'm just starting. I'm discovering all the tools okay. and all the things. So, I'm, I'm starting. I'm a beginner. <laughs> Okay, well that's okay. So we'll we'll have to do another talk with Brandon on me once you get that. really good at it, right? <laughs> I know because I'm on a few of them that I've just started. I still don't I still don't use Instagram very well, um, but I tell you what, I'm starting to use it more because I understand. And my audience is more older women. It's not really you know the the, the millennials and the younger generation who use a lot of Instagram. Although I know a lot of my friends are using it. Um, I've just I've had a challenge. Man managing, I have five social medias and that's enough for me. Uh, but I have clients who use it and they use it effectively. And if you've got a very visual business, like uh, I have one that's a food manufacturer. And so for her, posting her beautiful food displays every day has been a really big benefit for her. Um, so, you know, I think every channel has a different uh, value and, and you have to just know. Um, so, uh, Evan asked the question, what is the percentage for affiliates and what is the payoff for affiliates and referrals? And I'm not exactly sure what he means. Uh, Evan, if you don't mind, can you clarify what you mean by affiliates? Because we're not really talking about affiliates. We're talking more about branding, more of more of an esoteric uh, 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 approach as opposed to a quantifiable approach, if you will. Um so tell us about some upcoming, uh, anything you have coming up. What's next for, for Esther? <laughs> well, um, in the, on the 3rd of December, we have our annual gala. It's our Christmas gala, if you say, uh, here in Portugal for Glow Women Club. So it's going to be celebrated yeah. here in the north of Portugal, where we are based. Uh, I think it's a little bit a, lo a long way from you for you to come. <laughs> Yeah, but I will see you in March in Porto, but so you can be sure of that. In March of next year, we are yes. going to be, as you mentioned March before, we are co-hosting yes. uh, the World Conference 2016. So we are so excited. We're going to be your host. Uh, we, are, we are going to, to um, show you our city and our costumes and everything. So uh, we're going to be here during those three days. Um, so it's going to be from the seventh, from the sixth to the ninth, to the ninth of March, two thousand and sixteen. Excellent! I wrote that down for people. So if they're watching or they yeah, see the replay, the they link can uh, with all the program, out. our conferences, and all the workshops that and we're going to. So it's very important yes. for women that are in business to be there. And we just confirmed two new speakers, so I have to go in this week and get everything updated. We've got quite a bit of updates to do with the programming. But please do, if you're listening to the replay, check out womenofwisdomconference.com. Um, Esther and I and the rest of the people who are organizing this would love to see people. We've had people from, I don't know, seven or eight countries represented last year, maybe more, um, in Kashkais, which is just a little bit uh 40 minutes or 30 minutes from Lisbon. Uh, so it's it's just, but Porto is uh, wine country. So if you happen to be like me and you love wine, <laughs> that's the place to be in March. And it's right in the middle of uh, International Women's Day. So um, that we're going to be doing, a, I guess, a special project for uh, for that as well. Am I correct yes. in that? 
Yes, so that's wonderful. Kyle, welcome and thank you for joining us. So um, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you. Well, as I said before, you can go to glowbrandingyou.com or glowwomanclub.com. Uh, there you find, and Facebook is as well, Glow Woman Club. And LinkedIn, you can find me through with my name, Esther underscore Liska. Exactly. And it's E-S-T-H-E-R underscore L-I-S-K-A. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, on, that's on LinkedIn? Yes, I have my profile on LinkedIn. Excellent. Well, we we it has been just a delight having you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day because I know how busy you are, and especially knowing you have two small children that you you have to that you must take care of and everything, and I'm sure a, a busy household. So, Esther, thank you so much. Thank I'm really for looking forward me, to seeing and congratulations you. for your show. <laughs> You. And we'll see you soon. And tomorrow, I'll tell everybody, tomorrow we have the pleasure of interviewing Diana Dentinger, who is a new author of Modus Vivende. And I'm so excited because her new book just came out. Um, she's got a, a, a women's uh, group as well. And she's an amazing coach and speaker. So we're looking forward to interviewing her. That's tomorrow, the 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I don't know what time that is in Italy. It's uh, was seven o'clock your time now, yes. Esther? In Portugal? Yeah, so so it's probably around the same time. It could be an hour difference. I think it's an hour difference. difference. Again, Heidi. Yes, hour different. Okay, so thank you again. Again, we've had uh, Esther Lishka from Glow Women Club and Glow Brand Branding You. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Have a wonderful Bye. afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.